What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fowden, the man, Eric Sheets Aver. We are going to be talking through tonight, uh, Mondays in the NBA slate. It's, God, it's hard to keep track of the days today. I will be out later. I'll be leaving actually right after this. Um, oh, okay. But um, but I'll be, uh, you know, just, I just wanted, wanted to do a video quickly. And Sheets had a nice, uh, a very, very, very near win in the uh, in the afternoon, 3.33. So Sheets, great job. How, uh, tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, so I want to pull this up. It's very interesting, okay? So I ended up, as you see, I got second to to this guy. It's okay because he needs the money um, <laughs> uh, by like zero points. Um, I, I cast for 30, he cast for 100. And what was interesting about it is this, and you see we're all like 10 points ahead of everybody else. And this is the 333. And first of all, I, I'm getting a little annoyed. Not, you know, I'm not annoyed because whatever. It's, a, it's tilting. You see, finally. No, I see, but I see this guy. He's got 27 entries. This yeah. guy's got 15 entries. You played one entry, right? This, what's that? You played one, right? I never played more than one of this. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I barely played this. Remember, I decided the last minute when we were on the, on the stream that I was going to do it, right? And uh, because, uh, all right, so that's what, remember we were talking about, it. I'm like, you know, are we going to really let like Waller and, and Adams and Jacobs go up like 0% owned, right? And you're like, no, I'm playing on my, like, all right, you know, that's good enough for me. I'll play this thing, right? Um. So what was interesting about it is this. So I, I was, off to a really good start right off the bat. Like Waller got a touchdown and Walker got a touchdown. So I was paying attention to this like right off the bat. Yep. And I was watching this stuff kind of happen. And I was like in fourth and fifth and eighth and back and forth. And then I was in fourth and I was just trying to just hold off everybody else, you know, because I didn't have Kittle. And then when Kittle's caught a touchdown, people just went whatever. And I'm, I really didn't think I was going to get to like third or second or first or anything like that. Then all of a sudden in like that last drive, like Brandon Ayuk just went freaking ballistic. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And he went off and he got the hundred yard bonus too on like the last reception. Right. And I got there and I was in like one point of the whistles going to overtime and in overtime he, okay. So aside from the guys we had together, he had Stidham and Kittle as opposed to my, Purdy, Ayuk, and Waller. Okay. Oh. So I had a huge advantage. Okay. Yeah. Up two points. Now, the way it went down, I mean, it feels like you weren't paying attention because you weren't in the context of this tournament. Right. So in overtime, uh, they got, the, excuse me, uh, uh, Stidham got the ball first. So I'm like, okay, let him, let him complete one to Waller. And that's the end of the game, pretty much. You know what I mean? Right. Um, pretty much. Right. Because he'll maybe Purdy. Maybe uh, what's the name will get points or whatever, but uh, that should be good enough. And I like the first play. I didn't even get a chance to watch it because Red Zone uh, wouldn't let me watch that game. So I had to like sweat it on like on like the phone. And uh, oh, really? That's weird. Apparently, one of the first two plays of overtime, they threw the guy threw an interception, and the guy returned and San Francisco returned to like the five yard line. Like really, one of the only things that I could lose. You know, basically the only way to lose. Right? Yeah. So I got the point from the interception. But I was like two points behind. And, you know, that wasn't going to be good enough. Right. And because it got to the five-yard line, we, we had no we, we had no, no one to do other anything. than to just take a knee. Now, thank God that Purdy taking the knee didn't drop me from first to second. Because that would have that would have really tilted me. Like if the minus point two points or something for yeah. losing two yards. Okay. But this is what I want to talk about. So I, I texted you and I posted on here, can you believe that Devontae Adams 2.5% owned, right? And in the late slate, because, you know, he probably was even higher owned on the main slate, you, I, I imagine, right? But but not to be revisionist, right? but but listen, there is a reason why he was 2% owned. And, and the reason why is this. So take a look at my lineup here. Like you look at it, that even with getting second, I had a four ball, four bagger, right? With, with Randall Cobb, right? He had four points and Tutu Apple had three points, okay? And the thing is, is that because I played Adams, this was the type of shit I had to play in these lineups with Adams because I was having McCaffrey anyway. So that that's why, you know, he because like for example, even whistles the guy who beat me, even he had the Atwell, you know what I mean? And he didn't smash everywhere because he played Adams. Like everybody that had like reasonable lineups, like like no one else had Adams, so they were, didn't have to go and play some of that other crap. So it's not like so easy to say like. Oh, why? Why don't you play Adams? He's two percent in the three, three in a, in the three a three prong slate. But the reason why is because of the way the pricing was. Like, if you only had three games to choose from, it's not like I can see why he's higher owned in the main slate because you have more options to make him work in the main slate than in the the, the three game slate. 
Yeah, it's. I mean, it is. It is. It is kind of crazy if you think about it like that. But it. Is, but I mean, he was. He was out on it anyway. But like, I mean, it's just. It's. It's still just bizarre to me. Um, I think that there was a lot of narrative out there about the Raiders giving up, and I was like, look, these West Coast. I, I, I'm very good with the teams, you know, that are on the West Coast. I understand how they play against each other. Everybody in in, in Vegas, formerly Oakland and San Francisco. This is a big, a big deal to them. And they were going to come out fighting. And then there was a lot of people who acted as if they were just going to sort of pack it in. Josh Jacobs got hurt in the first quarter and actually came back and played. I mean, yeah, exactly. they were they were trying to win that. They were really, you could tell they were bringing it from the very beginning. And that's all you can ask for when you get all these guys at ownerships that are just kind of crazy. Yeah, is it a tough matchup? Sure. Are, is the Niners a little bit overrated? Sure. Are the, are the, are the, is the Raiders offense really good at home? Yes. Um, looking back, I actually wish I would have just talked myself into a little bit of stidham because I know it's easy to say that, like as a Monday morning quarterback and all that, but that was the only thing that I that I that I took away was like I really believed in the Raiders and I played a lot of Waller and, and Adams and I just didn't play the Stidham part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anyway, all right. Well, well move great on. job, Sheets. That was really really cool. Um, even yeah. though it sucks to, I, 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 it's always frustrating when you come that close and don't win, and I, I, I feel for you on that one, but. Um, still a great job. So That's with that said, ready to get to the slate? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, let's jump on it. We got my Lakers and uh, Charlotte playing early and we know what to do with this game, in my opinion. And that is play Westbrook, play some LeBron, by the way. I, I actually think LeBron, look, we talk about narratives and I, I, LeBron was unbelievable last, I think it was last show we had about basketball on Friday. I thought even with it, it was hard to get to him because he was so close in price to the, to the top, top spend ups. But when you put up 78 or whatever, it's, you, you can get away with it. But LeBron was great on his birthday, as he always is on his birthday. And, you know, anytime you're playing in Charlotte against a fast-paced team and an important game to win, and Michael Jordan is, is in the crowd, and you're that's your probably your biggest ghost that you're chasing, there's always a little bit of room for narrative there as well. So I am on, I'm on board with Westbrook and LeBron. I don't mind playing them together in this matchup. I prefer Westbrook for what it's worth. Um, and I think Thomas Bryant is going to go nuts tonight. So I, I really like those two. And as the runbacks go, you, we, we get, we're going to have to start having the Mark Williams conversation. Do we do we start treating this like as a transition? I think we're better off in general getting ahead on this one. So this is a rookie, a good, good, talented rookie uh, who everybody really liked, but didn't really have a chance to show off as much in college. So I think they're going to start giving him a little bit more of the keys and, and maybe at, at some point fading Plumley uh, out a little bit. I don't think that, you know, or, or at least give him a chance. What do you have to play for the rest of the year? So I think that Mark Williams is, is actually, there, there's high variance. Uh, there's certainly a chance that he puts up absolutely nothing, but I want to be ahead on him in general. So I like the idea of playing Mark Williams on the other side. And you have the always incredibly projected Gordon Hayward. Uh, I think he's viable because his price is so cheap, but I would be looking more to Melo and Rozier. I think this is a really good game to stack. And I will mention it as always. I always like some PJ Washington. So I, you know, I don't think I'm going to be able to play tonight, but if I was, there's about eight guys I would have mixed into, let's say I was playing three big lineups. I think I would have all eight guys in the combination of those three lineups as of right now. I have, um, so it's a 240 point total <laughs> and a zero point spread and a zero spread with, with pretty much all the narrative you could ask for, like you were, you were mentioning. So it's definitely something that, that, that you, you would like to do. Um, the, the, first of all, the context of the slate, like right now, like the value that I see right now is is not like that great. I mean, there are a couple of things that there that there are out there. It's not that great. Um, so you are going to have to be somewhat price conscious when you do this stuff. But um, I mean, I'm getting LeBron at a very low owned number right now. Uh, I, I guess when you're you know whenever Luke is on the slate, not to mention Jokic and Embiid, you know. Uh, it's it's tempting to want to pay for those guys instead, but you're getting a full thousand to two thousand dollar discount on LeBron in this environment. I mean, I'll tell you this: that one of these two, I think between Siakam and James, they're like the exact same price, pretty much, and Lamelo too. Yeah, I mean, you're gonna have to, and, and boy, and Durant also. May, maybe you will get. You can't. You're not gonna get LeBron low owned here. I, I just, I just I think can't. so. Yeah. Well, you know what? Let me ask you. So I'll ask you once again. I mean, do you want to? We we tried this before, and I don't think it worked, right? What, what, the game in L.A. Yeah, it did. Uh, it did work. I forget. Well, what I mean, it worked for Westbrook. Westbrook was put up to fifty five or something. Fifty four. West, it worked for Westbrook. Okay. Westbrook. Uh, it worked for Westbrook. Plumley. Uh, uh, I believe it was Plumley. Um, 
Thomas Bryan had a good game, I believe. Um, I think PJ Washington had 38. Um, so, I mean, it, it worked to some extent and for what it's worth. The other thing I will say about the Mark Williams thing is it, it is definitely high variance. Um, I, I like him as a player. I'm just worried if I played him that the only reason he really got those big minutes, not those big minutes, but um, the only reason like Nick Richards only played three minutes in his life. Yeah, that, that's the whole point though. He's, he's, there's no Nick Richards anymore. Is the, is the, well, is the I'm thing. not sure about that. You know what I mean? Like, what would uh, be the reason for them to play Nick Richards, who's not a guy who's really a part well, of it? Well, because because he had a sprained ankle was what was I, I could he's been playing well, Nick Richards. That's the only thing numbers. It's like it's like the what's it called thing. It's like anybody who thinks like the, like one of the worst players in basketball is Andre Drummond that you can have on a court and he puts up numbers too, but he doesn't ever contribute to anything positive. Um, okay. Mark Williams, I mean, just logically, uh, look, would they go? I don't see why they would go back to him. Um, you know, this is the 15th, Mark Williams is the 15th overall pick in the draft, and Nick Richards is is just a guy. Um, okay. um, so I, that, that's just my take on it. But again, is it going to happen every night? No, probably not. Probably Nick Richards will get minutes some of these nights. Um, but I think that I think that Mark Williams is a is a bigger you know a, a bigger a bigger guy for them to start start using than. And and I and I just want to be ahead on it, but will it happen? I mean, I feel nervous saying it because it wouldn't surprise me tonight if it was the Nick Richards instead. If it was Nick Richards instead of him, but the truth is they've been the worst team against centers in the in the NBA. They have no reason to stick with what they have. And as much as we think Nick Richards is playing well, he's really not. I mean, these guys are are, are significantly worse than every team in basketball against centers. Like, there's nobody even close in terms of fantasy points. They've given up the sixth highest scoring fantasy points games to centers in the season. So I just think that it's going to be Mark Williams at some point. Um, anyway, and my, my final take on this game and this, I never really looked into this and I haven't really brought this point up in, in a while, <clears throat> but I think LaMelo being 10 K specifically 10 K flat is going to make him lower owned than he may, may, may have been if he was 9,800. Um, and it feels like a kind of a ridiculous price tag, but I don't think it is. Uh, and I would, I would, if you're going to get, if I can get, if you can get two of these guys in the same lineup, um, at low ownership, I'm, I, I think I might have to try it. Um, you're going to need, you know, better value to open up um, or, or I can play the bad value, not the bad value, or I could play the, the okay value that exists, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind big teeing it up and just trying to put a number up there for the seven o'clock game. Tell everybody to come and get me, uh, especially if the two with the two forty total. Um, and I wouldn't mind playing both, both of all these guys. I wouldn't mind playing Westbrook and James and LaMelo and how, how about Mark Williams throw him in there? You know what I mean? That saves you some salary. And uh, yeah. and then and then uh, you know, hey, let's let someone try to beat me with any of these other eleven games. Yeah, and, and by the way, I, I just want to reemphasize that I like Bryant also, and I think that you can use other value in this game if Walker's out. I think Austin Reeves and, and Patrick Beverly are actually in play. I think this is a stackable game, so I'm I'm with you. All right, what do you got next? Chicago, Cleveland. Yeah, so it seems as though everybody's on my play now. What's I mean, that? Everybody, everybody, listen, I was the only one playing Karis Levert before, and now now he's. 70% owned in his last game. You didn't see that over the weekend. He was literally well, who was out though. Probably the whole country. I'm sure that the whole all the guards yeah, Darius Dar Darius Garland was out. Yeah, yeah. There you um, go. And well, he, when and that he, happens, that's yeah, that's yeah. He was literally 70% owned. And, and I imagine that that's happening today because I have him at a six he has the top uh point per dollar play on the slate and already projecting 30% ownership. Um uh, that that's weird because that must mean somebody's they're assuming. Oh, they are assuming that what's his name's Garland. Garland. Yeah, they are assuming Garland's out again. My bad. I actually would be. I don't know. I'm kind of inclined to fade this though. You know what I mean? Like we 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 when we were going over Karis Avert before, we were like, I kind of want to play him at low ownership. Kind of want to play him at low ownership and get him at low ownership. And if he ends up being like value at in the starting lineup. I don't know. We don't we usually like to play him coming off the bench. I mean, I don't know. Listen, I I missed it over the weekend. I mean, I'm sure he smashed at 70%. Over. But um I'd love to fade it, but I, I would need other value to open up to make me do it. That's 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 what I'm looking at. Aside from that, it just feels like another another Cleveland game with no fantasy points. Um so I'd probably be off of both sides of the game. Yeah, I think that the way you the only like logical way I can figure to fade Levert right now is to play Kevin Love. And I think honestly, you probably should be, be considering playing. He was Love. another one, by the way. He was 70% on the other day, too. Yeah, it must have been. I mean, it's a small slate, I'm guessing. Yeah. But I mean, he went nuts, too. Um, 
he played 33 minutes, which I, who knew he even had that in him. And this is the same match. Like, so Kevin Love is the other one you're, you're going to consider, but I think that Mobley was out as well. No, no, that's the thing. That's, that's why Love was smashed was, was a big 70% because Mobley was out. Yeah. And Mobley is questionable by the way today. So it's not like he's a guaranteed go. So if he's out, Kevin Love is, yes, we'll play him. If he's in, it's a very thin play, but it's way, it's one way you can get off of Levert, but it, you're right. It is going to be hard to get off of him. It's not impossible. Um, but I, I, I mean, it's, it's a good spot, and I think that he's a core, a core member of the guys you're using no matter what at, at this moment. The other way I guess you could consider fading him is if, you know, maybe you play Chetty Osman. But I think that we're getting into, like, some some uncomfortable stuff because he's – like, if, it's like if you, fade, if you fade him, it's not like you can win without him when he puts up 40-something as of right now. Now, if other value opens up, sure, maybe. But it's going to be a very, very tough fade, and I, I do think LaVert is a strong play. Uh, Levert and uh, Kevin Love being my favorite plays in this game. I don't mind uh, with Mobley out. You could, you, I mean, you could play Jared Allen if he's out. Um, and if Mobley's in, you can play, you could play Mobley. I just think that mostly it's going to be Levert or Kevin Love for me. And I'm not particularly interested in this matchup with anything from the Bulls side. Um, that's just what I've got. You don't have anybody from the Bulls, right? Nope. Yep. All right. So we can move on. Um what game do you have next there? Shane? Yeah, I got this next piece of the puzzle. So I got Toronto against Indiana, Indiana, and I'm making this puzzle work here a little bit. I'd like um I like Aaron Neesmith as the better value here at 4200. Um, you know Nimhart, like we you know like we've spoken about. I mean, when he's in the starting lineup and he's in control of the ball, that's one thing. But when he's you know just on the court playing 34 minutes with no usage, that's something else. You know Neesmith. As you pointed out many times, but I try to make the case for the MB Habes, the, the Nismet is, is just got a little more upside. You know, it's a little better, better play. So um, I, I do like Nismet tonight at 4,200. Um, as far as spend ups, um, yeah, I mean, I suppose Siakam at 10 too, right? If you don't want to play LeBron. Uh, uh, so I guess that makes sense. And I think Halliburton at 9 3, if you don't want to play a different point guard, I think he's very legitimate. So, uh, those two guys would be my my top guys, and then uh, so and and value once again, Neesmith. Smith and Miles Turner always remains decent for me. Yeah, um, as of right now, I don't mind the Neesmith Smith value. I think by later today, you just sort of forget about it. Probably. I don't. I don't, I don't think there's anything special about it or anything like that. It's just that he's the right price, basically, yeah. um, and he plays minutes. So. Yeah, Toronto should have a, a Van, Van Vliet tonight. And I, I think Siakam is completely reasonable, but um, I don't have any, you know, it's a good matchup. Uh, if, if Van Vliet is out, Siakam will get all the ownership. LeBron will get none. Um, and I think that, yeah. that Siakam is a really good play. And if, and if Van Vliet's out, I think you're also playing at least one of Gary Trent, Scotty Barnes, and and OG and Anubi. Um, I just think, and I think you might even you might include Malachi Flynn into your next too. So uh, Van Vliet news is really going to dictate this game. I won't do the Halliburton. I, I just I live by these rules against Toronto on full slates. You just you don't yeah. play point guards against them. You can play you can play even better if, if Van Vliet is out. It's just a nightmare of a of a day, especially for a guy who's sort of you know uh, Halliburton is not like an aggressive you know, try and take it to you kind of a guy anyway. So he'll be very happy just to let his teammates do the work. So I'm not, I'm not, not looking to try and play Halliburton ever here um, or anyone really in general against Toronto or Miami guard wise. Um, so I, I, I mostly am, am not all that into this game. Um, hopefully there's another value that opens up and, and that Van Vliet plays. If Van Vliet is out though, I would play Scotty Barnes or Anna Newby in probably most of my lineups and uh, mix in, Mix in some Siakam and uh, Malachi Flynn. Precious is questionable too, which could affect things a little bit um, for some of the some of the minutes for Flynn if if Van Vliet is out. So we'll, we'll just have to see him plays for Toronto, which we'll know because it's the early game. So it's nice at least. All right, what do you got for New Orleans Philly? Yeah, you missed a seventy percent on Milton the other day when um, when Harden was out. That was another one. A lot, of 70, a lot of 70 percent guys came in came out there Saturday. Like a two game slate or something? No, I'm telling you, it was not it was not a two game slate. I'm telling you, yeah. it, it was all the chalk. I mean, it mm -hmm. all hit. It was like amazing. Um so Embiid, I suppose. I mean, Embiid looks perfectly reasonable uh at 11 3. Um uh, Jokic is, I mean, like all these spend ups look good, if you want to know the truth. So uh 
Embiid looks fine. And I really don't have much else. I don't see any value. I don't, I'm not really getting to the New Orleans guys. For me, it's going to be Embiid or probably pass. Totally with you. Uh, don't see anything else to do uh, with Maxi back in the mix. It's really hard to get to anything. Uh, Embiid is technically questionable. Uh, we'll see about that as, as the time goes. But I, I think Embiid, if he plays, is a very strong play, but it's really hard to argue with playing any of these super spend-ups over Luka. And it's kind of hard to argue. It's, it, it is a little bit tricky to argue Siakam and, 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 and LeBron, even though we saw the big we saw the big LeBron game, they just come so much fewer like than Embiid's 70s. You know, LeBron's 60s come fewer than Embiid's 70s. <laughs> um, so M- Embiid is a good spend-up. He's not my favorite one. Again, I like the LeBron one tonight because I love the game stack. But um, he's not my favorite either. I mean, it's, it's going to be, we'll, we'll get to it in a minute, but I, I, if you get value and you're not playing Luca when he's on one of these tears, I don't know what, what, we, what we're supposed to do exactly. So really just Embiid or nothing. And even that is probably going to be by the wayside, unless we get super value and maybe you can make a Luca and Embiid lineup or something like that. All right. What do we got next here? We've got uh, San Antonio, Brooklyn sheets. Why don't you start this one off? Yeah, I mean, San Antonio, I think we we just keep playing Sohan. I mean, I, you know, 5K is getting, getting a little little harder, but I don't think it's too hard um, against uh, Brooklyn. Not not that against Brooklyn even means that much anymore. I mean, Brooklyn's playing good defense, actually. Yeah, they've become really good, huh? Um, nonetheless, I mean, I, I, I'll still play him at 5K. Um, and on Brooklyn, and, you know, we'll go – I mean, T.J. Warren's now hitting 30 minutes. Uh, this is looks good enough for me. I mean, I'll I'll, I'll believe all of this, and if I'm going to keep getting somewhere between 28 and 30 minutes out of this guy at 4300, um, on a, on a day where value might be might be fishy, I mean, I'll I mean I don't even have him projected well right now, but I, I don't care. I mean, this will this is somebody I'd, I'd probably want. Was that a complete uh, blowout that game? It's the only thing I want to figure out because look, like Durant played 29 minutes. That never happens. Um. I have to look back and, and see what happened in that last game they played. It could be, but even 26, 27 minutes. I mean, <laughs> that's that's reasonable, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, look what he's done. He's gotten like he's well over a fantasy point per minute in every game. I mean, yeah. So he 22 minutes, 27, 21 minutes, 26, 27 minutes, 40. This was the one bad game. And that was, you know, and then he played 30 <laughs> minutes and blow out, whatever. <laughs> I'll I'll try it. Um, again, it's, if, uh, if, if, if better value opens up, I'll forget about it, but, but, um, I'm, I'm looking for this and then on Brooklyn, um, uh, other guys, uh, yeah, I mean, Tyree at 8,700 ends or either one of them. Um, I just don't think this game environment is, is as, as predictable and safe as maybe playing LeBron, you know, in, in, in with the better total and the better spread. Um, you know, I, with, Every time I every play every time I play Durant, he gets forty eight, and he only has to play three quarters, like every single time. Right. Um, and this is a, is, a, is a pretty good is a pretty good opportunity for that to happen <laughs> here. If you want to know the truth? So, um, probably going to be secondary targets for me. Same here. Um, I love I, I do love I, I do like Warren. I was just sort of poking, you know, what what could be the the reasoning, but also this game could easily be a blowout too, which he would probably be leading the second unit in that case, and only come off the court if it was like a twenty five point game and he played his minutes already. So I do like him. Um, all of the Brooklyn guys seem priced fairly. Kyrie, Kevin Durant, Ben Simmons, uh, even Royce O'Neal in the mix. Like all of these guys are, are, are look priced just fairly. And I probably will leave them all alone. I think that Sohan is fine. I don't think there's any need to go out of your way to like, make sure to have him, but I think he is absolutely, he's a reasonable play. And I think if the cell is out, he becomes a better play. And if the cell is out, there is some other, you know, you could consider some other things here and maybe talk yourself into a little bit of a mini stack, but it's not, it's not my favorite game. So I'm probably going to pass on it. Yeah. All right. Next up you have the, uh, what do you have next? Uh, I have uh, Denver. Denver. All right. De- our Denver and I get our De- Denver, no, Minnesota, excuse me. Um, this is a, a fun game. I mean, like, look, Jokic, I think Jokic is probably, I have him like, just a tiny bit behind Embiid. I think they're really close, the two of them. And I think they both, you know, could easily be the highest scoring player on the slate. Uh, Jamal Murray still questionable. Uh, if Murray doesn't, if we knew Murray wasn't going to play, obviously we want to get some other pieces here, like some bones, 
um, Porter, uh, Jokic, all of all would become much better plays. But I think he's probably going to give it a go as of right now, but I don't know for sure. So assuming that he plays, I'm not really all that interested in anything on the Denver side. And uh, Gobert's getting down to a, like he's getting down in the prices. It just keeps dropping a couple he's hundred every game. Well, he's not playing any minutes. I know. No, no, I, I'm, I'm not saying that, 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 that I'm going to play him. I'm just throwing it out there. That they're, they're trying to tempt us here with him is what I was sort of trying to get to. But like I, I, I will personally pass. And then with everybody back, even – the cool thing about Anthony Edwards, whenever you want to play him, you know you can get him at no ownership. <laughs> but yeah. the problem is we like Edwards, especially when he, at least one of or both of Gobert and and and, and uh, Anderson are out because then all the offense really does funnel through him. He becomes bit like the point of the whole team, and then you, you get Russell as a shooter. Everybody looks fine. Um, again, projection-wise, I think that Nas Reed would probably be my favorite play, but I'm, I'm probably just going to stay away from this game. And it's a, it's a big total to stay away from, but I, I do like – it should be a good game, but I just feel like there's other plays I like better than uh, than prioritizing this one. Yeah. Uh, listen, everybody didn't realize, I mean, Jamal Murray was out yesterday. I think that's because of the back-to-back. So he'll mm-hmm. probably be playing tonight. Yeah. Um, couldn't agree more. I think, I think Jokic is right up there. Um, and like you said, Anthony Edwards, just when you think he's not going to put up a number, he'll put up a number. Yeah. Um, Nas Reed, uh, I'm just not sure. Um, probably a solid play. I don't, I don't know what kind of smash potential he has as long side of Gobert. Um, uh, I, I'm sure he could get there, but I, I don't, I, I just prefer to not prefer, but you know, just eat the chalk when he's, when he's starting, I guess, with, with no Gobert, I think. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that, I mean, like, yeah, that's what I was saying. He's probably my favorite, which means I still probably wouldn't get to him. So probably just going to gonna cross this one off for right now, assuming that Murray plays. But um, keep an eye out, though, because it was, so did it Denver, that was yesterday or the day before with Denver? I think it was uh, yesterday they played, I think. If they played yesterday, that's a cool. But that, that does make me think that they would probably do something else, right? Like, um, yeah, they did play yesterday. So, there's a chance like you might get Michael Porter sitting um, just because of his injury history. It's, they may not play him on a back-to-back. So just keep an eye out on that one. But if he gets downgraded or if anybody gets becomes questionable, I would treat them as if they're not playing on the back-to-back personally. But that yeah. would be something to keep an eye out for. All right. Should we get to uh, to Chuck, you know uh, – oh, no, not, it's not there yet. Oh, it is there. Dal- uh, Dallas used it. I mean – I'll just go on a real quick thing here. Like I've well, seen this- well, I don't even know what you're talking about. So Luka. who's going to be chalk? Luke, by the end of the day, Luca is going to be massively owned. I don't think so. I'll bet you anything. I'll, I'll you, take you my won, $1 you that I won from you. You won the dollar. You won the, you won the, 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 the not Friday. Well, to your credit, you were closer than I, you're closer than I thought you were going to be. Yeah. You were right on the command. And then he scored a touchdown in like 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, so you were right on that one. one. I, I think, uh, I mean, you got you got to how, how do you, you got to find you got to find value to play him, but yeah, I guess so. I guess I get thirty percent something like that. Like he's gonna project at what five and a half x at twelve four, and honestly, that projection is probably conservative. He hasn't put up. I mean, <laughs> let me just go through Luca's game log because this yeah, is so important. I'm gonna pull him up right now. Let's see how this gentleman. Does. They're winning games, and they are so he's <laughs> so his last four his last five games. He's averaging 80, 89 fantasy points per game. Now that's partly because the 110 he scored in the one. Look, game. look at it. Look, excuse me, look at his real life points. He, like, no, no, it's, it's 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 beyond absurd. 51, 35, 60, 32, 50. It's like, come on. And they're all double doubles with assists, too. Like it's 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 just beyond anything that like are they winning? Are they winning? They're winning too, right? They're winning, yeah. And then they're finally competing. And this is his MVP push right now. Like He's, I mean, he's had a, he's had a, what do you mean the MVP push? How, who's, who's in contention? Oh, that's a crazy question. You're going to, you, you'll, you'll be in, you'll, if, if you want to go down the list, somebody's going to hate everything. First of all, Jokic is the favorite, 100%. What? Not, yeah, but there's a barely 500 team, Dallas. Oh, I didn't realize. You just crept past 500. You got the best team in the West, and Jokic is having the best season of his life. Oh, okay. 
Um, but then you've got Jason Tatum on the best team in basketball. Oh, okay. And you've got the, the hottest team and the best team now with, with Kevin Durant shooting the best percentage from the, the best troop shooting percentage. Uh, I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. People who put up numbers like this get my MVP. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's, that's, no, but that's what these other guys do too. Jokic, I mean, Jokic had 45 and 20 in three out of four games. He had 100 a few days ago, a few weeks ago too, I think. Yeah. And, and, and Embiid too. I mean, Embiid is putting up 40 and 20 every, it's like, it's, it's, it's going to be tough, but, but these are not, these are crazy numbers. And I don't see it stopping. 45% usage rate in three out of the last five games. That is absurd. Like, if you have a 45% usage rate, even if you're the worst player in the league, you're going to put up 50 fantasy points. Jokic, uh, 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 Luka, the only argument you have, you could argue blowout, I guess. Um, but I think it's, it's very clear that you try. That's why, like, as much as I like LeBron and I like that first game, I think that maybe just playing Westbrook, maybe playing the 7K guys, like playing the Rozier, Westbrook, you know, Plumley, I'm oh, sorry, uh, uh, Bryant, um, and and Williams, along with maybe like a, a, a what's his name, the, the forward Washington, and then you get the Lucas spend up because I just think that this is really hard to match these kind of points, and 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 I don't see any reason why it should stop. Like I really don't. Maybe, so maybe. I'm I'm gonna be on the overweight Lucas side, even at high ownership. I just think you want to play him. That's my personal take. And maybe you look for those. Uh... For that ref that keeps on giving him technicals. I wonder if he's in this game or something like that. Yeah, that's right. He got ejected one of those games too. And he had, that was really annoying because I had him that night. He had, I think he had 51 in like two and a half quarters. And that was right about when he was about to go nuts. Yeah, we got to, so yeah, we used to have the umpire data. We should have the ref data. Seriously, I actually, you know, as the playoffs come around, that will be a thing. I'll, I'll make sure to do that for the playoffs. But it's hard for the regular season because there's just, it's hard to, it's hard to manage the, the crews. Um, yeah, anyway, so I, I, uh, all this to say that I, I like Luca. I think that there are a bunch of viable runbacks, but nobody that I want to prioritize. I think Jabari Smith is extremely reasonable at 5K. Um, I think Kevin Porter Jr. and uh, and what's his name always have a chance, Jalen Green, but I don't like see any reason to prioritize him. And I think Shen Goon could have a big game against these guys, but nobody who I actually really want, just guys who I'd be okay being left with or deciding to run back because I'm playing Luca so much. That would be my take. Anything else? Do you have it? What do you think, Chiefs? What, what are your spend up? What do you, where do you rank him in these spend ups? Yeah, I have him ranked number one. Um, I mean, by by a good amount. So, yeah, if I can play him, I will play him. Um, but I, you know, I, I have to make sure I, I, I like lineups in a minute. You know, uh, yeah, these other guys can score. I mean, they can't score eighty every game, but they could. You know, yeah. I mean, that's always the question, right? What what's better, you know, a, a 12, 4 and a three and a and a three five? Like what's better? Like Luca Gadonkic and Don Luca with Mark Williams, for example, or like LeBron with uh Miles Turner or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think I it's know. definitely the first one. For yeah. for upside for tournaments, it's definitely the first one because because Turner is gonna score the same amount of points as Williams some of the time here. That's true. That's LeBron true. is almost never scoring what Luca's scoring. Um, all right. So, so that's, that's, I, Luca is, is my priority. I, I, even with the, even if there's lack of value, even if it's not as much as you want, I still think Luca is the guy you're prioritizing. Like anything from Houston or no? I just went through all my guys. And oh gonna... yeah. I, 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 I'm not getting much of anything. I mean, St. Good yeah. is like my 30th ranked guy. That's the closest thing I have. Yeah. I don't think it's especially exciting. Um, what do you think of Atlanta Golden State? Ooh, fun one, right? Like, in a different world, we would be talking about, you know, and, and maybe we should. Maybe, maybe we're on over or under, like we're not looking hard enough at Trey and, and Dejounte here. Um, well, I think but, I think the most important thing to look at is honestly is the Golden State side because there's no Kaminga and no Wiseman. Well, um, I'll get to that. I always start off with the real team. Oh, sorry. Okay. No, no, no problem, no problem. Um, I, but I, but you know, whether Hunter plays has some some bearing on this game, I guess. Um, but it's as of right now, the only guy who I have is really a strong play, and, and he does look like a pretty good play is a Kongu. Um, I think that John Collins is every bit as good a play as a Kongu is, and he's just projecting he's projecting six points different. It's pretty interesting to look at their path because a couple like literally like three games ago was like he was projecting 12 points less than Collins, and nothing has changed. It's like really weird. Um, but if especially if Hunter's out, I, I'll go back to Collins. Now I know a Kongu has Oddly has more secure minutes than Collins, but those are probably my two favorite sides in the Atlanta. And then with all the guys out for Golden State, 
it, like I get I get the idea of reserving a spot with your Anthony Lamb, right? Okay, like that's play Anthony Lamb, reserve a spot for him. Okay, have a play him at thirty percent, or if he ends up thirty or forty percent, doesn't feel great. Um, I don't think that Looney is like ever guaranteed to do anything for fantasy purposes, and he's cheap and it's a good matchup, but like it feels kind of fishy. Um, DiVincenzo, I feel like is always fishy to me. Jordan Poole is, you know, we know he can go nuts. I, I don't know, man. I, I don't know that I want to do a lot here. Like, I think of these guys as more just like reserving spots, like Ty Jerome and Anthony Lamb, I guess would be my favorite values. But we've seen DiVincenzo not do anything in these spots before. Now it's a good matchup and he could, he could get there. But what I, I think I'd rather play Draymond Green than Drake, like play Draymond Green and play Thompson as the lowest owned of the bunch. Maybe that's one way to go. Or you play Ty Jerome and Anthony Lamb and just use the value. I don't really want to play all these guys, but it is a good game environment. So this is a this is the game that definitely is the hardest for me to know what I want to do with. How about you? Yeah, I'm not getting much on the Atlanta side. That's the problem. And and the Golden State thing, you hit the nail right on the head with the with the Kev, Kevon Looney because because with Kaminga out and Jeff Green out, you know what I mean. All these guys out. He's just going to project well, you know, but, but he's going to project well as a median, but how much does, how much ceiling does he really have? Now we've seen him go on a couple of runs where he's done. Okay. But if he ends up being ch really chalky for lack of other value, um, that is, I wouldn't say it's fishy. I think, I think it's safe. You know what I mean? I, I, I think that I think 20 points, for example, you know what I mean? Is safe given, given that there's nobody on the court to rebound the ball, you know, there's nobody there. Um, but uh, if it becomes like a big, big, highly owned piece of GPPs, I don't know if I want to do that. Um, I think Draymond, I'm just thinking of also from a rebounding perspective. I think Draymond can pick up more rebounds. Um, I, so I like that. DiVincenzo looks fine. Um, and then I think Jordan Poole is just one of those guys that's just going to be in play every day until, mm -hmm. until Curry gets back, until he's, while he's 8,200. And this, his game log just kind of shows it, you know, like, he, he makes everybody mad, makes everybody mad, makes everybody mad that nobody plays me, scores 55. You know, that, that's that's exactly right, right. Um, So you just got to commit to guys like this. Um, I, I guess, again, I wish I had more to offer from the Atlanta side, but I just kind of don't. Yeah, I think I think for me on Atlanta, it's just it's just the one of the Okongu or Collins as, as, as a priority. And, I, and it, you know, it's worth noting that these guys are like, especially Okongu, like, but mostly you, you basically get a 6X performance out of them every night. <laughs> like... And, and, and actually plus a 6x performance and that's actually set 7x in most of these games um that's that's right that's certainly usable at that so so that, that would be my favorite run back but i'm not like love I, something about this feels weird and and like I, there's a part of me that feels like it could, could turn into like the bench playing all the, the minutes and instead of these these guys like like divincenzo i just i don't know i've never i always liked divincenzo as like a sneaky off the bench guy cheap but like he doesn't shoot the ball all that much um, he doesn't like he doesn't initiate that much when when Jordan Poole's there, and and Draymond. Um, I don't know. He has he's only had one really good game since all of this stuff has happened, and one game over forty fantasy points, and it's, it's just mega chalk. I just feel like I'd rather do other stuff, and I do think Clay will be low owned, and because it's a good matchup, I think that you know you could bet on this being a Clay ten three pointer type of possibility. That may, maybe that's what to do. Play play Draymond. Clay and, and maybe one of the values between Lamb and Jerome with uh, Collins or Okongu. That's that's something, but I, I, I'm i having a hard time with this one. Yeah. Um, all right, you want to move on? Yeah, let's move on. Um, Detroit and, and uh, Portland, want to? Yeah, so these staggered, um, whatever, these suspensions are coming to a close pretty soon, um, but there's still some value here. And, and Detroit value I'm coming up with is, um, is, uh, is Sadiq Bey. Um, I just wonder what to do if he doesn't start. Um, just not sure. Uh, but he started the last game and he was had put up uh, 18 minutes. So maybe it doesn't matter. Um, so uh, that'd be my favorite from the Detroit side. Uh, Isaiah Stewart's always kind of playable. Uh, Portland. Um, Lillard, 9,800. Kind of a stack. Stacked slate with this, this, these, you know, uh, Siakam, LeBron, Lamelo, uh, uh, Durant. You know, I, I don't know if I can do Lillard, but showing up right in the mix, right in the middle of them, just doesn't seem like, uh, you know, a similar game environment to some of those other guys. So I'm probably kind of either 
using Bay as kind of another sort of fishy value or or nothing, I think. I don't think there's anything fishy about Bay's value. That Just cross out that last game. They're not going to play their young guys on back-to-backs heavy minutes. They just don't do it. Um, and when the, the bench unit gets rolling, they just stuck with the bench unit last time, and that's why, why it happened. Uh, Bagley went completely nuts, um, and I don't believe Bagley played the night before, if I'm, if I'm remembering. I doubt it. So I think that Bagley was like the fresh legs. Oh, no, he played 13 minutes the night before, and he played 28 minutes this game. So everybody, I, I'm not, I, I don't have any fear of it. I think everybody's being underprojected from Detroit because of it. Okay. So I actually think this is the value I would prefer to use than, than because at least there's a ceiling with these guys. You know what I mean? And like, I mean, if you look at it, only Alec Burks played more minutes the other night than he did before. I actually like Burks a little bit. Um, with Bagley back, it's going gonna, it's gonna to mess up the Isaiah Stewart, Jalen Duran thing. They're both going to have chances. But Bagley is is going to get some of those minutes, and we didn't have him for a few games, which made it really easy. And but even when he's been there, we've still got we've got enough good performances out of Duran, where I think Duran is is very solid. I prefer Kongwu for what it's worth, but I think that, that you know Duran is a guy I, I was considering along with the Kongwu, and I also like uh, the fifty nine hundred of uh, of of Thomas Bryant in the first game. I do like Sadiq Bay as value, and so so it's Bay. Um, Bay, Duran, Burks, and Ivy, I'm all, I all have strong interest in. None of them, I feel like, are musts, um, but they're all guys who I would consider using, and especially because they're playing later, we can uh, we can wait and maybe pivot over to some Warrior stuff. If you can get, like, maybe maybe you can get Luca with, like, the first game and then using the suspect value from Golden State and Detroit and hoping you get some news that, 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 that either solidifies that value or opens up other value, I think it's a pretty good way to go. Um, I didn't get too much from from Portland, did you? Nope. Okay, so that's that's pretty much we're pretty much on this. You know, I, I just I just think the value is a little bit better than it's being projected for. So in that case, I'd like to get. Yeah, it. That sounds good to me. I mean, because Bay I have is like my second top overall point per dollar play, and you know, mm-hmm. if nothing else opens up, I'll try him. They're all streaky and they're very deep, even though their depth is like questionable depth. <laughs> they're they're deep enough to where they can play these guys and. But it's still, it's still no Killian Hayes. It's still no, obviously no Cade Cunningham. Um, there's, there is, there is room for these guys to have big games. So I would, I would, I would be separating probably Burks and Ivy unless I was stacking in some way, and I would probably, uh, I would have Bay just set separately as a good play on his own. Um, but Bay is a little bit shooting reliant, so you got to hope that he's, uh, he's hot that night. Yeah. Um, if he plays, by the way, I think Nurkic is a good large field tournament play, but no, nothing that really stands out as like a must or anything here. I don't have anything from Miami Clippers. Yeah, hard to get too much from this one. Um, it's like literally like the, the projection nightmare uh, game. Nobody likes I, I guess a good way to put it is if you didn't like any of that, I have nothing else for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, 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 <laughs> that's exactly right. If you don't like any of that, this is not, then we're done. Um, yeah. I like the, the, I know I mentioned some other centers, but I think that if you're mixing in these 5,100 guys, I think you could throw Zubac into the mix. He actually has pretty big games against the better bigs in the NBA. Like, you know, I mean, he's, he's, cause they'll keep him on the court more. So it really just solidifies his minutes when he's got to play against a BAM or something like that. Um, so, so I think that, that, well, that Zubac is a good large field. Well, well, hold on, hold on a minute. Are we, are, are we not supposed to play Kawhi at 35 minutes? What, what do we think Kawhi is? Like, I don't know. Well, he had 40, had 44 in his last game, 42. That's not, that's not, I don't want that. You don't want that? Okay. No, I would like if he's, you know. Right, I'm just I, I think it's just I think it's just always Paul George if they're close in price. Okay. I mean, Paul George is playing 40 minutes. Um, okay. And he's the much better fantasy player. Even, right. even that Kawhi. Uh, no, you're right, you're right, you're right. He's just a, he's really, uh, he's a, he's, he, he would, you know, he's a score with assists. But what, what I do like about what Kawhi is doing, though, he has been a very good distributor so far, and they're actually – they say that he's getting a little bit unlucky in terms of his assists. His assist numbers are better than they – you know, the last three games, you know, he's put up what 18 assists in three games. He's not a huge assist guy in general, but uh, he is starting to get a little more used. I mean, I'm not saying he's not in play. I just – terrible matchup, probably not the slate where I would do it. But, yeah, he's, he's going to put up some 50s here and there. But I think that Paul George will put up 60s, so I would rather just find the money if I was going to play one of them to, to get to Paul George. I think we still treat Kawhi as if he's right, maybe better than he – well, better fantasy. He's never been a guy we really desperately needed for fantasy, um, you know, for the most part. 
Anyway, um, so so the priority was uh, the first. It's, it's literally I like I like the first game with the Lakers. Um, that's a, that's 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 a, I like every, all the pieces in it. I think this Golden State Atlanta is probably going to dictate how you do tonight. I just am really struggling with that one at, at first look, but I I think that trying to get at least you know maybe using them as like I said temporary value holders. They do only have ten guys, so these guys will get some run. And Moses Moody is in the mix as well, who will get some run. But it's just not that exciting to me. And there certainly doesn't feel like, like if that game is really close, like how many minutes can those guys really play? Because these other, the starters are going to play a ton of minutes. Um, uh, Luke is the priority along with the first game for me. And then trying to find the value that we don't know about be it, you know, Anthony Lamb or uh, Mark Williams, who I think is uh, Mark Williams. I'm going to play anyway. Um, I just get I like the speculation on him. You do have Levert as good value. Um, Akangu. Those are some of the names outside, and uh, T.J. Warren and Sadiq Bay. So there's some guys out there that actually could really put up some big numbers um, and play them with the Lakers in Charlotte, and then throw in Luca. That's what I like. All right, that should do it. All right, well, good luck to everybody. I'm very sorry not to be with you guys today, and look forward to getting back after it full steam ahead tomorrow. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys hopefully at the top of the leaderboards. Good luck. And I'll see. I'll see you guys later for sure.